also following a new warning from Iran as it responds to US President Donald Trump's new sanctions. The standoff is deepening and has the entire region on edge. Both sanctions and insults are being hurled in the midst of these growing tensions between the US and Iran. And now a stark warning from the US President. Donald Trump has just tweeted that any attack by Iran will be met with great and overwhelming force and will, be me and will mean obliteration for Tehran. This comes after Iran's President Hassan Rouhani lashed out at Washington, saying the White House is suffering from mental dis disability. Now, the harsh words are in response to Mr. Trump's issue of new sanctions over the downing of an American drone last week. Now, an Iranian spokesman says those sanctions have closed the channel of diplomacy forever. But the U.S. National Security Advisor says the door for negotiations is actually still open. President Trump yesterday imposed significant new sanctions on Iran's supreme leader and other top leadership individuals and entities. At the same time, the president has held the door open to real negotiations to completely and verifiably eliminate Iran's nuclear weapons program. All that Iran needs to do is to walk through that open door. Okay, so we are covering this from all angles. Aaron Lieberman joins us for, from Jerusalem. Fred Pleitkin is live in Tehran. But first I want to bring in White House reporter Sarah Westwood in Washington. Sarah, hi. Talk us through this latest tweet we're getting from the U.S. president threatening Iran with obliteration. That's right, Robin. President Trump saying that any attack from Iran and, and on an American anything, in the president's words, will be met by force. He describes that as overwhelming force or even obliteration. But this after the president pursued a military strike against Iran on Thursday evening in response to the downing of an American drone and then pulled back at the last second, 10 minutes before that strike was set to be launched in the president's own telling because he learned of the anticipated number of Iranian casualties. That was 150 Iranians. And so the president here talking a lot tougher after he pulled back from that military response, sort of shifted to focus more on an economic response that included those sanctions against Iranian leadership that he signed yesterday. Now he is again threatening military action. The administration, by the way, never took a military response off of the table, even as they leaned more towards strengthening the existing sanctions regime. But the president making clear that he is prepared to do that. This, as he says, he does not believe he needs congressional approval to strike Iran. Some Republicans, Democrats, they disagree with that. Senate Democrats, in fact, are even considering a filibuster of the defense funding bill this week in order to push uh, an amendment that would require the president to seek congressional approval. But nonetheless, the president keeping his options open and trying to keep the specter of military action hanging over Iran, Robin. Yeah, as he said last week, the U.S. was cocked and loaded. So we flip-flop between this threatening stance and then open, leaving the door open and saying that America doesn't want war. So uh, just stand by, Sarah. I think we have Fred Plaitkin, who's live in Tehran with more on all of this. Fred, I don't know if you're there. Um, if you could just talk us through what the response... Fred is good, yeah. So, Fred, if you could just talk us through what the Iranian response yeah, will be to this latest um, tactic, <laughs> strategy. What is it we're seeing from the American president here threatening Iran with obliteration? Yeah. Hi, Rob. Well, I actually think that it's the, uh, the president reacting to the statements that he's heard from the Iranian president today. And you can really feel how the rhetoric uh, between these two is starting to heat up. I think on the one hand, the, the thing that the Iranians really initially took offense with was, was the fact that you have these new sanctions that have been put in place also against Iran's supreme leader, but then also, of course, coming in the next couple of days against the foreign minister as well and against senior members of the Revolutionary Guard. Now, Hassan Rouhani went out today and said he doesn't believe those sanctions actually are going to have any sort of effect on the Iranian economy or on the people who were sanctioned because they don't have any sort of assets internationally. But they were quite angry about this. And Hassan Rouhani then went out in language that was a lot stronger than you would normally expect from him, said that the White House is confused and also saying he believes that the White House is mentally disabled. Here's what he had to say. <laughs> They had become frustrated and confused. They did not know what to do. They do strange things that no sane person in the history of world politics has done, or at least I don't remember. This is because of their total confusion. 
They have become mentally disabled. The White House is suffering from mental disability. So there you have it, some pretty angry words from the Iranian president. Now, of course, we're unclear whether President Trump was reacting to exactly that, but he was talking about a statement that he thought was not kind. Uh, the Iranians also, by the way, saying, and I think this is also very important, that with these sanctions, they think that the door for diplomacy with the United States has been shut, showing just how uh, angry they are about how this happened. And Hassan Rouhani also said, he said, look, the U.S. says it uh, wants Iran to go back to the negotiating table and go back to diplomacy, but at the same time, they sanction Iran's top diplomat. And the Iranians are saying that's something that just does not mesh with what the United States is publicly saying, Robin. Okay, so while we're talking about doors being closed, open, half a jar, I don't know, we're also hearing from John Bolton. So let's go to Jerusalem. Oren Lieberman is standing by. Uh, Oren, so we heard from John Bolton. He said the door was open for negotiations. All the Iran have to do is walk in. What else came out of his meetings today where you are? Well, the, the bulk of uh, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton's statement was what his normal position is on Iran, which is incredibly hawkish, and he certainly didn't let up at all uh, in his statements today or his statements uh, in the rest of his time here in Jerusalem, where he said Iran's, in his words, malign activities in the region need to stop, as well as their ballistic missile program, and there needs to be verifiable elimination of their nuclear program. And that is what he said needs to come uh, in the event of negotiations. I had the chance to ask him, look, Iran says for negotiations to begin, there needs to be some sanctions relief. Essentially, uh, it seems as a goodwill gesture to, to show that the U.S. is serious about negotiations. But he said, look, he doesn't take Iran at their word. He doesn't trust the Iranian regime at all. And because of that, they're not, there's not going to be sanctions relief before negotiations. They need to, to show uh, the, the first action needs to come from Iran when it comes to trying to, to bring about talks. There needs to be a verifiable end, again, to their nuclear program and an end to what he calls their malign activities in the region. It's worth noting that Bolton's statements come in a trilateral meeting between him and his Israeli and Russian counterparts. And if there was supposed to be a united front here against Iran, or at least some of Iran's activity in the region, there wasn't. It was the Russian top security advisor to uh, President Vladimir Putin who came out very much on the side of Iran and who said the downed U.S. drone was in Iranian airspace, was in Iranian territory, which contradicts what the U.S. Uh, and Israel have said and also contradicts uh, and also said that uh, rather that the defense ministry of Russia has intelligence to that effect intelligence to the effect that the Russia the, the US drone was in Iranian airspace so Russia coming out very much on the side of Iran Russia is at least an ally or a partner of Iran and has opposed sanctions from the beginning so this was a trilateral meeting it was certainly a big accomplishment for Israel to host it here but not all countries on the same page on Iran here yeah, certainly not. Uh, thanks so much, Oren. I just want to go back to Tehran. Fred Pleitkin standing by there. Uh, Fred, we've been speaking almost every day for the past few weeks if we, if, as we've been seeing this uh, heat up. Mm. Uh, a lot of the analysts I've been speaking to have been saying that they were in many ways expecting the Iranians to escalate in order to de-escalate. Is that what we're potentially seeing here? Well, I'm not sure whether the Iranians are, are trying to escalate at this point in time. I think right now we might be in a de-escalation phase, uh, if you will. But it certainly seems as though this problem is definitely not going away. I mean, we have to see if we look past the rhetoric uh, of, of the Iranian side, essentially what they're saying is that these sanctions to them are already war. They have said that financial sanctions against Iran to them amounts to economic warfare or economic terrorism, as they put it. And so if that's the case, then obviously, even if there is a short period of de-escalation right now, the situation is not solved um, as long as they say, as long as the United States keeps up its maximum pressure campaign. Now, the Iranians have had an interesting strategy in all this. On the one hand, they're obviously being very tough towards the United States, but at the same time, they're also telling the European countries that if they want to preserve the nuclear agreement, the Iranians need to start seeing some economic benefits very, very quickly, or the Iranians are going to exceed those limits of low-enriched uranium, which of course then would put the nuclear agreement even more on the ropes than it already is. So whether or not there's going to be more uh, escalation, whether or not that's an Iranian strategy, I'm not so sure about. But it, it, one thing is definitely for sure, and that is the fundamental issue between the United States and Iran is nowhere near going away. So it doesn't look like this is, might be a one-off thing this week, the past two weeks that we've been that we've been reporting from here. Okay, thanks so much for that. Uh, live from Tehran, Fred Platkin, Oren as well there in Jerusalem, and Sarah Westwood in the White House. Thanks to you all. Great to speak to you.